Yes, and uh, we thought that Troon was about half an hour away because that's where how far our air is from our house. We've just looked and it's 39 minutes, and the ferry leaves at half eight. So we are we will be getting there at 8:29. Um, someone thinking we might miss the ferry. Troon. Okay. Oh, Troon ferry terminal. Um, Okay, no, now it says we're going to get there exactly half eight, which is uh, perfect. So, I did say that this video <laughs> was going to be a video of uh, when my dad came up and, go, you know, exploring the local areas. Um, well, he did come up, but all I'm going to say is family. Um, those of you with challenging family dynamics will probably understand what that means and I don't think I need to go into it in any more detail. So, um, he left yesterday, today is Wednesday. Because I was expecting him to still be here, I've booked in no meetings for today, I've got totally free day. So yesterday we thought, we, we live half an hour inland, Air and Troon are by the coast and 30 minutes west. And then opposite Air and Troon, is the Isle of Arran. I don't know if you can hear me over this, but um, yeah, it is the Isle of Arran. And we've never been. It's stupidly expensive to go over by car, so we were gonna go over when my mum, sister, and her boyfriend came up. It's a hundred pound return to go by car, and unless you're planning on staying a few days there, a hundred pound, I just don't think is worth it for a day trip. But it's literally like four pound fifty per person per way. So it'd be 20 quid, just under 20 quid for the both of us. So we thought, hey, let's do it. But <laughs> the ferry leaves at half eight. Actually, there is another one at half one. But the issue is, is there's only two back. One that's at half one and one that's at half three. And what we didn't realize also is that the ferry is an hour and 20 minutes. You can see the island from air and it really doesn't look that far away. So I thought it would be 40 minutes yeah. max. But seeing as it's gonna be an hour and 20, even if we did get the half one ferry, we'd have to come straight back again. So we just thought, let's just leave. If we make it, we make it. And if we don't, we'll go and explore somewhere else. It's meant to be 22 degrees today, sunshine all day. So we want to make the most of it. And that's what we're going to do. So <laughs> keep, you <updated. laughs> yeah. keep you updated, see where we end up and what happens. Um, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> red light so far. So. Great, excellent, That's excellent. Cool. It's brilliant. <laughs> so we realised en route that there was zero way we were going to make the ferry. So now we tried to find somewhere nearby that would make sense. Oh, there is, is this a path? No. A driveway. Um, and it, you know, all the reviews were great for this place. It's like this little cove in this forest with this lake. But none of the reviews tell you how to that get there. Looks like one. Does it? So we're trying to find a way in. Slowing us down already. 
stop. Essential maintenance. <laughs> maintenance. How we're, where we're meant to go. Out here, you've got to make your own path. Is that right? It's all about survival. Are you really meant to like Either scale way. this? Surely not. Surely not with a dog. Because this is like a dog walking route. But where route. does that lead? I want to see where the path paths. Go on. See if the path paths. Take him one for the team. Surely this isn't right. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at the minute seems to be going to plan. But that's why you just have to get used to laughing at things because like when so many things don't go to plan, you've just got to believe that there's a higher plan and a plan that may be different to the one you intended, but maybe is better. Um, there's so many lens flares. I don't really know how we sort this out, but it is what it is. so much they are just my absolute happy place it is a shame that they don't show up better on camera i just think there's so much going on the camera doesn't know what to focus on but this is absolutely stunning pop in the comments are you someone that likes to be in a forest or like next to a wood if you know what i mean i like to be enclosed in trees Whereas some people like to be next to it, like next to a river, next to a forest. What kind of person are you? So it did tell us to go up these steps the entire time. So we just didn't read it properly. <laughs> Off we go. Honestly, it looks insane. Like you've got these trees swooping over. John was talking about putting a tent down there because we bought a load of camping stuff. Not that I like camping in the slightest. I'm not high maintenance at all, but oh, camping, the condensation is either like condensation because it's like so hot or it's wet because it's rainy and it's leaking. It is like a beach down here. Sand, how crazy is that? That's all right. Babe, we were going to go for an explore, weren't we? Around sort of Stirlingshire Way, yes. Loch Lomond. But then when we looked at the prices of Airbnbs, it was like 150, 200 pounds a night. Hey. So then you suggested, hear me out. <laughs> you had a vision. Tell, yeah. tell them about your vision. What, rather than spending 200 pounds a night and it's gone poof, you may as well get some tent and camping gear that costs like 180 quid that you can then sell if you don't want it or you end up not using it set up find somewhere in scotland you can go anywhere so you may as well get a little tent yeah find somewhere get well we've never done camping we, before so not together no hate it. Well, i've never really done it Fair. which we did and we got so, we babe, got a loo <laughs> we got a little a little port of loo we never used it yet but the vision called to me i was like i've got to give it a go so especially we're in the we're in the place for camping in scotland mm. like imagine just have waking up to something like this no maybe not exactly this but like, yeah how cool would that be we did buy the camping gear a couple of months ago and then I think we were really busy and then it rained a bit and then we were busy again. So now we're thinking it's going to have to wait until yeah, next time. Both the sunshine comes. And got asked to go up to Stirling, literally the place we want to go, to do some work at hey. the university there. So obviously I'll only have accommodation for one night, but yeah, might as well go for an explore, see what we can find. Yeah. So yeah. And that's in November. Accommodation covered. Accommodation covered. Yeah, just boy. Just for one night. Just for one night. But yeah. yeah. Have I booked it yet? I don't think so. I don't think so. I need to book it. You think what? What? Hello? Why <laughs> one, my G? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Blue skies. 
it is, we were saying, it's so still. Like, look at this water. It's moving so slowly. So it's so bizarre that there's just sand. The air is so still. There's no wind. Just got like a little background noise with the water. Travel. Stunning. Shall we move on to the next? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we are now going to attempt to climb up here and hope that it's the right way because we basically ignore the directions. Let's go. that fern so green so incredible this is why I moved to Scotland literally it still feels like when we come to places like this like this is 20 minutes away from our place from our house but every time we come to places like this like this feels like you're on holiday so it doesn't feel like this is our oh that shot is just stunning with it just doesn't feel like this is where we live yet. We've only been here for a few months, so I'm sure it will soon. But it is very, very nice when people come over for us to be like, oh, we'll take you here and then we'll go here. And we actually have a nice area to show people. Whereas previously, like the first flat place I had to myself was in London. And kind of people that I knew already lived in London or it was a trek for them to get to London. So. And like London's massive, so there's so many things, places you can take people, and usually they're quite expensive. And then I lived in rugby, <laughs> and there's not a whole lot going on there. And I couldn't have a car, so that made it more challenging. And then we moved to Retford, where we had two properties there, just renting. And yeah, there were some nice areas here and there, but nothing like crazy. But here, however, there's a lot, is there not, my love? I feel like we were meant to miss that ferry. Yeah. <laughs> he keeps walking into uh, cobwebs and <laughs> being bold. He feels them a lot more than I do. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Yeah? So the whole reason why we found this place in the first place was there was a place called Peden's Cove, wasn't there? and it looked pretty cool on the maps. It looked just like you were gonna stumble upon it and it was gonna be this little thing and then you go home. But no, there's this whole walk and this is just a fragment of the experience. Hmm. It's also worth mentioning that we, and I, and I kid you not when I say this, we haven't seen a single person. We haven't seen anybody. We see more slugs than people, and we saw one slug. <laughs> um, it's like we've li we have literally got this whole place to ourselves. And yes, I know it's like 9 a.m. on a Wednesday, but usually there'd be dog walkers out. There literally isn't a soul. So it's very nice. Turns out uh, the cove was not down there. Um, I don't know how we've missed it, but um, time to get back up. These big, big bulky steps. John's decided to run. <laughs> We've finally made it. After a little like 15 detour minutes with all those steps. Good exercise, but and luckily we did come into contact with another human. Yeah. Who uh he did say like it's probably not worth it, but um we're here, so we might as well take a little look. Let's show ya. Okay. No juniors beyond this point. Sorry, what does that mean? <laughs> Very funny. That's crazy. That's so cool. Peden's Cove. Like, how crazy is this with the rock formation? I'll read you some history about Peden's Cove. Apparently, they date back to the 17th century when the steps were cut out to enable a like a guy to preach to his congregation on the other side of the river, and so. He would have like stood over here, not on this, but over there on these steps that had been cut out and preached to the congregation across the river, which is just Amazing. mental. Imagine going to a church service here. <laughs> be pretty cool. Okay. At the age of 33, Peden became the minister. He was expelled. Why? Oh, because he was, what, so he wasn't allowed to. So that's why he took to the, he took to the hills to preach to people. 
Oh my gosh. And then he was like, he was under arrest. To hide his identity, Peden took to wearing a cloth mask and wig, which are now on display in the Museum of Scotland. For 10 years, he was able to escape until he was captured and taken to Edinburgh, where he was sentenced to imprisonment on the base rock. He remained there for four years before being taken to the toll booth, toll booth in Edinburgh. In 1678, he and 60 other prisoners were exiled to the plantations of America. Oh my God, that's crazy. When the captain of the ship found out that the prisoner's only crime was to be true Christians, he refused to take them, so they were set free. And then he returned to Scotland in 1679 what? to carry on with his work as a preacher. Oh, crazy. Oh, and he died in Auchinleck, which is really close to where we live. <laughs> Who's secretly buried by friends in the Auchinleck churchyard. Wait, what? So after, six weeks after he was buried, people that were angry at never having caught him exhumed his body with the intention of hanging the corpse from the gallows on the Bar Hill of Cumnock what? as a warning to others. The Earl of Dumfries stopped them carrying out their hideous plan and so to show contempt for Peden, the soldiers buried him at the foot of the gallows. And now there's a, a monument, so there you go preacher not allowed to preach did it from this very forest and oh, then wow. yeah it goes in it there we go should we go and explore yeah well, let's I do think it it's there that's pretty crazy like all these years ago what so would you stand here no i think it's the, i think they're on the other side and then he used and we're saying that this is like something you'd find in a theme park that's fake but it's actual real rock Crazy. We have just arrived in a little town called Creswick, which is by the sea. So as it's such like a, there's no wind today it's and it's beautiful weather, we're firstly going to go to Weatherspoons. <laughs> Probably, might not, Maybe might find something else yeah, for breakfast share. because I made a little bowl of yogurt and berries and granola but for us to share if we did go to Aaron. Um, but we we're kind of, bit, yeah, we had a little bit, kind of fancy something a little bit, a little bit more. And I need wee, so <laughs> I think we're going to go there first and then have a little look. Have a little look around town. A little yeah. town and then go to the beach and then head home maybe, I don't know, I don't know. But we've got the whole day ahead of us. you a little bit of context basically we've finished our breakfast about an hour ago um yep. for context we are in a place called air so we went for breakfast in presswick which is literally like five minute drive from mm. air it's like the town over on Obviously, the coast yeah. um now we go to air all the time because it's the closest place at the shops b and q like okay. bits and bobs like that and... there's the beach yeah we've come here so much so we kind of thought that we knew everything that's here we decided to go and explore a castle which is like a 40 minute drive away well there's so many castles so we're gonna see nice. a few and as we were driving there literally in the air we pass a golf course and then a park it's like bell size park or something and there's a castle there's a deer park and we have been to this town so many times and we never knew about this there's just more and more places popping up all the time that we've never seen and it's just so cool bonkers but we don't already know this yeah and we bought a frisbee so um, you know what? You need, we need a guided tour let's go there. let's go this way let's go this way cool. i think there's a cafe oh i love myself a forest and there are so many here this is why i moved to scotland hmm. you know what an ass stables how peaceful is this place? It's just still. This is the perfect time to be. 
be honest with you, when we decided to buy the house in our, in our little village, we really thought we were moving into a really crap part of Scotland. It was a stepping stone, always wanted to live in Scotland, so we thought, buy one of the, basically the cheapest house and see what it's like up here. But the more we explore, the more it's like actually we live in an awesome part of Scotland. Oh, yeah. Maybe all of Scotland's like this, but compared to the places I've lived down south, it's just beautiful. It reminds me of when I moved to London, when I really didn't want to live in London. And actually London, because my expectations were so low, I was so pleasantly surprised by how incredible it was. So sometimes the thing that you least want to do, or the place that you least think you'd be happy, actually ends up being the place where you get the most fulfillment and satisfaction from. So yeah, sometimes low expectations are the best thing, aren't they, my love? Yeah. You basically, you go on like a sneeze glitch and it just spams, it just spams sneezes and you can't stop basically. <laughs> this is gorgeous. This is what my boyfriend does for fun. <laughs> Look at him, Brandon! Look at him! <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> it's my storage holder for my um, your storage skimmy. holder for your skimmy yeah. stains. <laughs> is that right? Oh, this is just insane. I don't even know if it's picking it up on camera. Like this, we're meant to be heading to Greece in a matter of weeks. And I think this is exactly what it's going to be like there. Like, look at that castle. Crazy. This is what it feels like in Greece, with like with the mm. sun beaming down, with the water there. Like we've just seen a boat go past, which is just like when we go on our boat trip in Greece. It's crazy. It's all right here in Scotland. crazy like what is this our the fourth place we've discovered today so. and it i just my heaven is pine trees and i also love like a black cabin vibe with big windows and this is just it it's cool it is cool let's go in you don't only see the uh the pine trees and the sea next week that's tomorrow. true yeah that's what's weird like that should be like in the inland somewhere do you know what i mean not yeah. right next to the sea yeah we'll cool. give you a good show He's over there. We've got an island in the distance, which I think is the lighthouse, but I might be wrong. And then you've got all of these pine trees up here. And then this incredible farm shop cafe like this. I don't know if you can see it. We've just signed up for National Scotland Trust, whatever, National Trust, Trust for Scotland <laughs> membership, uh, because it is £20 each to visit Colsey and Castle, which we didn't realise because I, I read the reviews and they did say it was free to go around the grounds, but apparently it's not. Otherwise, it's like £10 a month for both of us to go around any of these places. So a fiver each, rather than 40 quid, <laughs> I'll take it. I love a good viaduct. Where was the viaduct there? There's a bookshop. I love a bookshop. You said there was a deer park as well, didn't you? Deer park was there. Park. Fire what pond. Was... What's a fire pond? I don't know. How's that work? <laughs> Ice house. Wall Happy garden. Valley. Uh, little cat gates. <laughs> what? Oh, cat gates. What does that mean? <laughs> Only one way to find out. But the weather is still looking stunning. So let's get out there and explore. Yeah, baby. <laughs>
What were your thoughts on the castle? The word that comes to mind is adequate. Adequate. Hmm. Considering you'd have to pay £20 each if you didn't have a membership to get in, it wasn't as far as castle go. Like, there it is. It looks massive from the outside. Well, the problem is that they've shut off probably 70% yeah. of the rooms. So, like, there's yeah. only a handful of rooms and a lot of them bedrooms, empty rooms with, like, mm -hmm. a cupboard in. But they're also um, very dark. Like, I don't know. It just, there was a cool staircase, but... I think yeah. purely based on the fact that someone would have to pay twenty pounds. Yeah. Each. Of all of the things that I wasn't allowed to film today, I'm kind of glad it was there. <laughs> yeah, but I think this side, I think, is there. Um, that's a more modern part of it, so maybe that'll be more impressive. But um, yeah, not quite Bridgerton vibes. <laughs> going because we've not really eaten today what did we eat earlier did we have a snack oh no you had a milkshake Flavor. but since oh yeah we ate breakfast at 11 and then since then we haven't had anything um so we thought we'll get some and then we'll go to the other side of sort of the grounds but they the kitchen was closed so we thought you know what we're gonna leave <laughs> we need we need some, we need we need to sit down we need some food so yeah. We are going to head back, I think, and on our way we might come across some other cool little bits and pieces, um, and then we're gonna make some. This is what we've got in our brains. When we get back and realize we don't have what we need to make it, it might change. We kind of want to make some creamy pasta. We can't make carbonara because we're vegetarian, um, but we do have a powder that I don't think includes, like obviously the ham, so I think we're gonna try and make like a mushroom carbonara yeah. and I can't wait because I am hungry and I'm about to get hangry you think that's a joke you think, you think I'm joking well we'll find out won't we she's already hangry yeah we're back and when I say <laughs> carbonara <laughs> yeah, when I say that we are knackered since you last, since since I last spoke to you on the camera, we haven't done anything else. We've just been in the car, but being in the car, our bodies and our minds have just like we're just knackered. We're exhausted. We saw we've done over fifteen thousand steps, which isn't massive, but the level of levels of enthusiasm for the places that we've been and the energy levels. I think we, we haven't had enough food or water to have sustained those energy levels. And we've, we've, 
yeah, we got to be back. We're going a little bit loopy. So plan is the, the thing that kept us going on the way back was carb, the idea of carbonara and a glass of whiskey, well, whiskey lemonade. Um, and my voice is going. So I'm going to go and get into my joggers. My favourite thing to do at the end of the day. And we're going to make some dinner. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Boom. You're going to cheers me. We just did a cheers, that's, that's why. We just did that, didn't we? <laughs> See you later. It is a couple of days later and I've just been editing all the footage from the last few days. I really, really hope that the magic of the places that we went to really showed up in the footage that I took. I don't know if it does, but I took you along with us as best as I could. I got my phone out to record all of the different places that we went and it was just everything that I needed. I won't go into too much detail, but the last couple of months have been really challenging for me and it's hard that I can't really go into specifics. I'm good, I'm absolutely fine. There have just been a lot of little challenges that have kept tripping me up and getting in my way um, in regards to something that I'm doing. And that's just been quite tough. So it was really nice to get outside, enjoy the weather. I've never felt the air so still here in Scotland and the sun just so consistently there and so to, to discover like the beaches that we found and the castles and the golf course. I just feel so lucky to live where I live and I'm determined to make the most of these places. So today it's Sunday we're actually going to go to a place called Kilmanock and go to a couple of shops there and also have a walk around the country park there because it's one of my favourites. Now, what's actually crazy is we went for a walk, was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was Friday. We went for a walk on Friday around Dumfries House, which is this castle uh, and grounds owned by the king, literally a five minute drive from our house. And we arrived and there was a whole row of Bentleys and a police car. And we were like, what's going on? Anyway, we decided to ask somebody and I'm very glad we did because he pointed out that the flag was flying on the castle and I don't really know this stuff. I don't really know what that means. And then he said to us that the king was there. So the king was just wandering around the grounds. Like there's no, nothing that you need to do to get in. You can just drive up and walk into this country park and right up to the palace, right up to all these incredible cars. And the king was just walking around Dumfries house gardens with no bodyguards. And so I'll insert some clips of the cars and the palace or whatever it's called. I guess it's just a house, isn't it? It's not a castle or a palace, but yeah, the house. And also we got eyes on um, to the king himself, which is just mental. Like the place I live is not the type of place you would envision the king coming to. And so Dumfries House being so close to where we live, being it not a very affluent area at all. And so we've gone to Dumfries House so many times and it's chill, it's lovely. But when we arrived on Friday, the amount of people in suits, fancy dresses, just the the wealth of the people there compared to the types of people that, that we're there with normally. It was it was an interesting experience, but yeah, pretty cool to uh, to say that we saw the king. I mean, there's only one king, King of England, so to have seen him is pretty cool. So I'm gonna leave this video here. I appreciate there hasn't been a huge amount of mindset tips or kind of really an insight into my work life, but this was an insight into what we get up to when work life is really super intense and we need a break. What you saw in this video is like my dream. The stuff that I love to do, the stuff that makes me feel really, really grounded. And although there were still little stresses going on, it was really, really what I needed to just relax my mind and take some time out. So 
That was absolutely wonderful. And I'm so glad I was able to bring you along with me. So stay tuned for the next video. I'm sure there'll be a, <laughs> we've gone from like a super chatty video last week to a video where I barely chatted to you at all. So uh, let me know what you're enjoying, what you want to see more of. And don't forget to give this video a big like if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And with that, I will see you sometime soon. I don't know where I'll be or what I'll be doing or when it will be because I don't have a huge amount going on over the next week. So I don't know what I would film. But if you've got any suggestions, as always, leave them in the comments or send me a DM. And I look forward to seeing you when I see you.